Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. All all right. Hail and welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Good to see everybody back here again, hear from everybody. Um, hope you're all doing well, and uh, hope you're enjoying your coming into the, the, the springtime months of the year, you know, at least for us here in, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, and in most of the uh, parts of the U.S., at least. You know, things are starting to warm up. Things are starting to think about, at least, uh, moving towards springtime weather. Although here in Middle Tennessee, at least uh, by the time this podcast airs, we are looking at perhaps a pretty good, you know, strong cold snap coming through. Um, I think the day is supposed to start out like by, uh, up around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And by the time the evening rolls around, it's going to be dropping like 50 degrees with the chance of snow. So we ain't there yet, but, you know, earlier uh, last week, going over the weekend, I think even I had the air conditioning on, you know, and uh, right now it's, it's cold, it's rainy. So definitely got to keep up on those vitamins and the, the vitamin vitamins. And uh, keep that immune system boosted. You know what I'm saying? Uh, drink plenty of fluids, vitamin C, orange juice, tea, mead, whiskey, whatever, whatever it is that you like to, to sip on. Stay healthy out there. Um, I've actually got a pretty, uh, pretty cool show lined up. Actually, a uh, couple of good shows coming up. We've had some people either call into the, you know, hotline um, or email into the show and bring up some pretty neat things. So we're going to be hearing from uh, Chad in Nevada, Nevada, Nevada. I guess it depends on where you're from and who you ask, but, you know, that that Western state um, going to be hearing from him later on in the show. And uh, he's got a pretty good question, I think, that um, was intended as this, like, hey, you know, if you get a chance, you know, you want to call me or text me or, or talk about this. But I think it's a good topic to have, you know, up here um, for everybody to listen to and, and to, you know, share your thoughts about because uh, I'm sure it impacts or, or some, something like it or, or exactly like it um, impacts a lot of families, a lot of different ways. So we're going to be hearing about that later on in the show. Um, but I did just want to kind of uh, uh, give you guys an update on, on a few things around here, uh, things going on here in, in my area um, with our tribe. So uh, as some of you may know, the one of the major uh, feasts or major holy tides that, 
that we know of historically as 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 having been celebrated in um, ancient you know Germanic tribes would celebrate maybe not all of the Germanic tribes but in, at least in the um, certain areas of, is was Sigurblot. I think it was big with the Swedes. If I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, Sigurd bloat it was like the the summer uh, coming of summer victory bloat is 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 what it's historically referred to. I think the Swedes or the Norwegians. I have to look back at my sources again. Drawing a blank on that one, but anyway, um, every year our tribe for the last like a couple of years, I think this would be our second or third year holding a Sigurd bloat. Um, thing uh at our go these parents property and we have typically uh you know had a big fire and and hold ritual and stuff around our ve uh which is out there like i said on on, on dingo's parents property and this year um you know so every year we, when, when we plan to do it uh we always go up there ahead of time couple of weeks prior at least and make sure that the grounds are prepared right um any wood that we need to cut uh mainly for like the fire because <laughs> we always we always uh source the wood off of the property like we never just go buy bundles of wood or whatever like we literally go out there and cut wood from deadfall um no chainsaws just you know straight up like saws and axes you know the old old school way uh so that's kind of become our like pre-ritual ritual we'll we'll go out there and we'll prepare the land and scope things out and make sure everything's in order and um and then you know in anticipation of the event so secret bloat this year is in mid-april and it, you know it varies a bit from year to year of course based off of the lunar cycle but um you know when the full moon hits um on the the the, the, the goa month so uh, you know go out on monitor so with we we are going out a couple of weeks prior um to the event we're actually going to be going up i think this year it's april 16th that is the first night of first secret bloat and uh we're going to be out there on that night like on the first night in april so we're going up there a few weeks prior we're going up there actually at the end of this month um and we're going to camp out overnight which we've never done we've usually just gone up there spent the day you know doing our thing and you know have a fire and or and maybe not even none we usually yeah sometimes we've had a fire i think and then left uh you know either that that night or or the following day or uh spent the like spent the night at his parents house you know but this time we're going to go out there and we're gonna do our thing and we're gonna camp um and the last time we camped up there was in November of last year. So it was like 28 degrees. Um, great, great experience. It was, it was more than just a camping trip. It was, it was a spiritual journey. Um, so, you know, sleeping out in the cold like that was invigorating. And uh, so, of course, you know, end of March, beginning close to the beginning of April, I suspect that we will be dealing with much milder temperatures, uh, probably a bit more comfortable for for camping out in and uh, it's going to be you know me and and uh, dingo and our, our law speaker patrick and then dingo's daughter uh, is going to be joining us as well so we're going to be you know clearing the property getting things ready for you know the actual ritual in you know later on in, in the month of april and have you know family time with uh you know dingo's side of the family his daughter and then at the end of the day sure we'll have like a, a cookout or something we usually do something along those lines and then uh camp out up there and just enjoy nature i'm looking forward to that and i think that's going to be a really wholesome and important part of preparing for the cigar bloat ritual because it, it falls at the same this time that, that that time of year or this year when it falls specifically is the same i think weekend or, or might even be the same day or within a day or two of of dingo's parents wedding anniversary you know so uh celebrating that celebrating the actual event you know secret blow it's like it, it all lines up perfectly it's you know it's a victory blow and in traditional 
times when it was celebrated, it was, you know, to, to celebrate the victory for, you know, in, in, in battle or in, in combat or in, uh, you know, victory through in, in growing good crops for the year and, and all this other kinds of things. But it's, you know, for us, you know, we're not going to battle or anything like that. And, and, but like Dingo's parents, his mom, especially, uh, does do some gardening and, and has herb gardens and, and things that she wants to, to have, you know, good crops for, and then it's literally their wedding anniversary. So there we are celebrating multiple victories, um, this, this, uh, this year. So got a lot to look forward to with that coming up in the spring. And I know that a lot of, uh, not just like Germanic heathens, but other, um, pagans of, of other, uh, views of other worldviews of other polytheistic uh approaches to things are are looking at this time of the year that we're going into around you know the spring equinox and and all this uh looking at some of those other um celebrations that happen in the springtime it's a very uh refreshing time of the year right you know we, we we've spent the last x amount of months in a time of darkness and in a time of cold and in a time of, you know, dormancy and isolation as it were. And now those, those, those days are changing and we are seeing the rebirth of your, you know, the rebirth of the land and, and the things that, you know, bring so much warmth in life are coming back to life. They are returning to us and uh, you know, being a part of that, cycle living during that cycle you know it puts a lot of things to me or for me into into perspective you know when uh so much outside of the world in the outside world is going on i mean you know looking at the state of things that that the world that we are live in right now the state that the world is in is is you know can, it's really depressing you start focusing on all of that stuff you know and and it, it can really bring you down and uh, I don't know, like I've, I've found that kind of siphoning off certain things, filtering things out, um, not having such a wide view of the world. I don't mean like, you know, stay isolated and, and not pay attention to the major things that are happening. You obviously want to pay attention to what's going on, but uh, to what extent does worrying about stuff really do any good? You know, I'm not saying just, let things happen and, and not care. But again, it's a relative and it's all about the, you know, putting things into perspective. What I see happening close to, to, to me and my nearest and dearest is, is what I'm most concerned about. You know, um, we recently had an opportunity to help some people, our tribe, you know, potentially help some people with a, a really major thing that they're experiencing. Um, like spiritually wise, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, and this, this aid that we were called to started off with, um, really just one person who is, he's my brother, man. I, and I won't say nothing bad about the guy here. He's my brother. He's not pagan. He's, he's definitely not what we would consider pagan, but he's, he's definitely the most pagan non-pagan that I know, or at least one of them. Um, might have him on the podcast one day. We've we've talked about it in you know a few different conversations where he's like, "When are you going to have me on, brother?" And I said, "When do you want to come on?" You know, and uh, there's just been a lot going on in his life um, here, probably since October. I would say is is when things really started to end of October, beginning of November. Uh, ever since then, it's just it's just been a whirlwind for the guy. So not sure when he'll be coming on, but eventually. I think we'll get him on here. And um, it started with, with, with him coming to me saying, somebody's looking for you to help them with something. And he gave me the spiel about, you know, what the deal was. I'm not going to go into details about it yet. And I'm just going to keep it pretty open-ended, but bottom line is, you know, when, uh, when, when he came to me about this, he was like, I'm coming to you because when, uh, the guy that went to my brother um, said that he wanted me, uh, my brother Gene, he was like, 
I got to bring this to my tribe. This isn't a, something that I can speak on anyone's behalf. I need to go to my tribe. And he came to me and I can, and I brought it in front of everybody else. And then turns out, you know, we got a, a, a little get together planned, a lunch date, as it were, uh, planned with us members of the tribe and and this family and, and some of their close friends, at least, yeah, one of their close friends and probably Gene too, uh, to get to know them a little bit more. Like I know two of the people that need the help that, you know, the one guy was asking for, it's a husband and wife and their family. Like I've met them before one time, but that one, that one encounter, that one meeting, uh, what, you know, sparked something to, to want to call out for help from somebody that, you know, they, 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 they felt was, was trustworthy enough to, to provide that help. And then when I say, Hey, this is, this is more than just me, you know, there's, there, there's, I, I can only do so much. I'm going to need some, some help with this myself. Do you trust me to go into my tribe and, and, and talk about this? And they say, yes. It's like now the rest of the world's problems don't even, uh, matter as much right because of the perspective of things have changed now it's like now we have an opportunity to to you know hopefully positively um impact and influence uh a family's life who have uh potential to uh be you know be, become part of our tribe and it's not something that we look to do like forcefully right like we're not this is not why we're doing it um we're doing it because we want to help and because they came to us, me if at first, but, you know, we, I look at it as, as an us thing, you know, they are, they are putting their trust into us to do a thing. And so to prove that worth to them and, and to, and to allow our worth to be measured by these people, that's how worth is, is measured, right? It's not how much good we know we do of ourselves. It's how much, how much good we are, uh, is put on us by, by other people. Worth is placed upon us by, by, by our people. And so it's like a worthing thing, uh, you know, like it's, it's a thing to worth us. And it gives us a lot of uh, opportunity to strengthen our tribe's luck. So that's what I look at. That's what I look at when all this other crap's going on in the world. You know, I, uh, I look at the, uh, the things that are in front of me and around me. And I go, huh, I got things to worry about here. Not like worry, worry about, but I mean, like I have things to focus on. I have, I have things that I should be putting my mind and focus and attention on, not, you know, what's happening halfway across the world. Um, and again, not, not to make light of any of the, of the, of the, you know, terrible things that are going on around us, but, Okay, I, you know, you have one or two things you could do, put all your focus and attention on all that and worrying about it and not being able to immediately do anything. Or you can recognize that it's there, take, you know, note of it and, and do with it that is that is a, a healthy measure, but then really look at, okay, okay, what, what is, what is going on in front of me? What is going on around me? What's happening close by that I can put my energy and focus into and, and do something good with it? You know, so there's a little, little thing. Um, that's that, that luncheon dates happening this weekend. Um, this, this week that this podcast is airing, um, this Saturday, we're supposed to all be meeting up and having lunch together and getting to know each other and coming up with a game plan on how we can help these people and, uh, do the thing that they are asking to be done. So with all that, and then, you know, preparing for Sigurd Bloat coming up next month at the, you know, by, by camping and preparing the land at the end of this month, so many cool things going on that are about, you know, community building and tribe building and worthing and all of the things that make up what I feel is, is at the, at the very root of, of heathenry, you know, um, at the heart of heathenry is, is the home and the hearth. And we're going to kind of get into that here in just a minute. When we listen to this call from Chad out in Nevada, <laughs> uh, that came in last week, or actually, I think this is, uh, this came in a couple of weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah. Um, you know, the, the heart of heathenry is, is, is in the hearth, 
the home, the family. But without a strong family, there's no real basis for an extension of family to be built upon. You know, I mean, when I said before about, you know, what we're doing as a tribe to help these people who are not part of our tribe, uh, will that ultimately determine, you know, that they, that they become part of the tribe? Who knows? Like, again, it's not something that you force. It has to be something that is organic. Um, and we don't go into things looking to recruit people, for lack of a better term, you know, where we're, we're not out here in Middle Tennessee um, flaunting anything to try and build up members. I mean, our, our, our tribe as it is right now has stayed in its number almost since the day it was announced that it's a thing, you know, that, or that we're a thing. Um, not lost any members and, you know, we haven't gained any either. So it's, it's, it's one of those things that I think is, uh, got to see how, you know, got to, when, when you first start something, it's, it started off, nurture it, start it, um, start it slow. Don't rush into things and don't try to just be like all of a sudden, oh, we got to have 25 people minimum and whatever, right? Like if that's your network and you have those resources to be able to tap into and, it becomes that thing in, in its organic way, then great. You know, that wasn't our situation. And, and to try and make it that situation just felt like we were, or we would have been uh, just pushing things a bit too hard and not allowing it to become the organic thing that it has and is today. So we'll see. Um, ultimate, ultimately, what we are doing this for is, is to help people who uh who asked for it so and they seem like good enough people and um uh, you know friends of our tribe and or members of our tribe so we'll definitely uh probably be talking more about that when and as things progress i, I will we'll see as i know talking about these types of things leaves some juicy tidbits hanging around for later on to come back and say what, what was that? What was that? What did we talk about? Yeah, what's going on with that? Well, we'll see. You shall see. Um, so, yeah, Seager Blow, that. Um, the camping, of course, that's coming up at the end of this month to get ready for all those things. Um, hope you guys are, are, are thinking of, of ways to, to celebrate, you know, the return of, of the light, the return of the warmth, the return of sauna, return of boulder sometimes people will will think of of this time of year as you know the the ragnarok cycle um where boulder returns and, and all this uh it's neat and of course other polytheistic faiths that uh, that have this uh cyclic you know rebirth recycle uh motif <laughs> for or, or uh belief system you know uh, how it how it comes back around all the time and there's this that that rebirth hope you guys are are looking forward to that and, and coming up with things to celebrate and do with uh friends family maybe kindreds tribes covens whatever so i do want to uh i do want us to listen to a call that uh came in like i said before this guy his name is uh chad Chad from uh, Nevada, and uh, I think, is that the one? No, that's not the one. I think that's the one. But yeah, Chad from Nevada. Let's see what he has to say. So uh, let me get his call pulled up here. All right, cool. Yeah, here we go. Hey, Jesse. Name's Chad. I'm out here in uh, Gardnerville, Nevada. Uh, man, I've really appreciated and, and uh, enjoyed your podcast uh, while I work. You know, I'm a, I, I'm a peace officer. I'm in the patrol truck lot. And, so listening on there has just been a great help and uh, 
checking out your YouTube, man. Just really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Chad, real quick. Um, and thank you for uh, the job that you have, the, the, the civil, uh, civil duty that you're performing um, as a peace officer out there. Um, so stay safe out in, uh, in your patrols, and, and, and thank you for what you do as well. Um, hey, got a couple questions for you. Uh, one, hey, if you know anybody out here in Nevada, I'm, I've, I've been doing the heathen walk for a couple months now and just really looking to try and hook up with a group uh, of some like-minded individuals. And uh, <laughs> obviously with coming from a law enforcement side, needing to stay away as far away from any of the uh, – the, the crazies out there uh, that uh, do this off a of race and uh, crap like that. So uh, my main question. Yeah. So uh, real quick, before we go further, Gardner's Gardnerville, Gardnerville, Nevada. So for all of our listeners and, and viewers, uh, if you're in, if you're in that area, um, comment down below in the comment section. Uh, don't know how you get in touch with Chad, but uh yeah, I guess put it down in the comment section because this is this is going to be up on YouTube, of course. So, you know, Chad, if you're listening, watching, buddy, uh, check out the comment section to see if there's any uh, anyone in your area that might be checking in or, or giving you some insight. I, I don't have any real connections in Nevada. I have a couple of people that I know in California, uh, the Pacific Northwest, you know, so um, that's the Northern American Nordic Society or NANS. Um, I could check them out. They may have some folks out there in that neck of the woods. Um, but yeah, um, Gardner, Gardnerville, Nevada people, uh, or anywhere in that surrounding area, check in and let us know where you're at. Uh, is, uh, like I said, I've been doing this. I've only been into it for a few months now. Uh, I've been doing studying it for a few years, kind of finally, uh, came to a head the last couple of months, but, uh, my wife is still a uh, very, very devout Christian, um, very conservative Christian. And that's kind of how she, we have two kids, two small kids, and that's how uh, she's been pretty hardcore raising those kids. And it's like you're transitioning in this, man. I just wanted to ask you a few questions. I'd um, love it if you could kind of uh, reach out to me on my phone. All right. So I'm going to just uh, skip to the part where he's – not revealing his phone number because I don't want to put all that information out there for anybody to call him. But uh, let's uh, <laughs> just wanted to get past that, that section, but you know, I, I get it, Chris or Chad, sorry, I get it. Um, the, uh, the concern that you have or the, or the question that you're having with um, living in a home that is a, uh, um, opposing seemingly right opposing religions or, or or differing faiths it's definitely something to it's not uncommon so i kind of wanted to put it out here on the on the air uh but yeah just some questions about that and you know um as you can kind of imagine putting an altar in the house and doing some of those things just a lot of strife about and and just tension about going down this path um because uh just how you know you know how to you know, uh, conservative Christian, kinda, you know, what the Bible says and how it, how it's kind of played out. It's kind of rough. So I just wanted to, you know, kind of, uh, reach out and get some questions and, and see if you had any ideas about smoother transitions or, or, you know, how to broach the whole thing with, you know, exposing it to the kids. And, you know, obviously I'm not going to hide it from them, but just, um, just trying to get a third party opinion, some other, other folks ideas of, of that. Um, so, Anyways, man, really appreciate it. Thanks again for everything. And uh, I just hope you have a great day, man. Later. All right. Thank you, Chad, once again. Um, and, uh, yeah, so everybody, you know, hopefully heard um, what Chad's talking about. This is, this is not uncommon, you know, where families of differing faiths. Um. I'm actually, you know, I'm going to weigh in a little bit here right now, but I'm going to also be providing some information in the description in the show notes of this podcast for content that I, you know, would, would always recommend from Eric Shervin, uh, Eric Wordweaver Shervin on the Ravens call has done, a, I think a number of videos specifically on this, because this is really kind of his, this is def this falls in his wheelhouse, right? This is kind of his specialty. It's what he's been 
gotten a higher education for, right? Psychology, family, working with kids, um, that kind of thing. Uh, and, and I mean, he's got a, at least two that I know of off the top of my head. It's going to be linked again in the description and show notes of the podcast, but a couple of videos that he's done on this very thing. And I would highly recommend that you, you know, check it out. But ultimately, um, you know, you talk about the, you know, imagining the, the difficulty of, of living in a, in a home that is, you know, someone is so strictly devout in one way of, of believing and has even extended that approach and belief to their uh, children. Um, and, and again, I, you know, me speaking, I, I, I come from no place of experience with this because uh, fortunately in my heathen beliefs, um, while my wife is not Christian by any means, her family and everybody on that side of her family are as well as my side of the family. And I've been effectively uh, excommunicated from um, pretty much everyone on my side of the family. Um, nobody calls me. I might get a text on my birthday or something like that. Um, but this all, this all, all that dissolved last, last year. Finally, it all just came to head where it was told to me in no uncertain terms that, you know, I'm possessed and, and, um, you know, there's, you know, if I decide to change my ways, then they, they'll, they'll talk to me. But, uh, yeah, you know, I was basically just told on no, under no uncertain terms, should I, uh, come and try to see them or, or have contact with them. And so whatever, right. You gotta, sometimes like, like that's the way it goes. It becomes that much of a, of an issue, you know, where you, uh, you lose part of your family members, or at least they, they choose to, to not do anything with you. But on, on, on my wife's side of the family, nothing like that has happened. Pretty much everybody knows that I am not Christian. They may not know exactly what my faith means or, or choose to want to educate themselves or be educated, but they don't, they don't pass judgment on me. Um, and by and large, they're, they're, they're decent and, and, and kind people, right? My wife's parents, especially my, my father and mother-in-law, Beautiful people, wonderful human beings, love them to absolute bits, you know, uh, would do anything for them. Um, and, and a lot of her uh, other relatives, you know, cousins and, and aunts and uncles and whatnot, same way, you know, very, very strong belief in, in an Abrahamic God. Their, their, their Christian faith is, is very important to them. And they don't judge me for, for not believing the same thing that they do. And they, they, they've welcomed me into their family. They, they've been accepting of me and, and don't try to push their, their stuff on me. I mean, I've been raised in Christianity longer than I've been heathen. And it was a very, very devout and a very, very strict upbringing. So I know of all people, I know what it is that you're talking about when it comes to the kind of conflict that can occur or the kind of you know rough patches and difficulty that you have when you are dealing with that amongst your family. What I can't really relate to is what you're experiencing in the sense of you're married and you have children um, and the person with whom you share that much with is not on the same page as you with your religion, with your faith. Now, I will say, and I will agree with what Eric would say, is that it's difficult to make work, but it can work where you have a household of opposing faiths, drastically opposing. I mean, I'm not talking about like, you know, Celtic, Druidic, and Hellenistic, uh, or Hellenic, uh, you know, paganism versus Germanic paganism or anything. No, I'm talking about like straight up opposites, you know, Christian and pagan, opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, there, there are, and there, 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 there can be um, peaceful existence between the two, in that sort of way it all boils down to a mutual respect of each other you know if you're asking you know how to uh you know you're talking about transition you know because i guess the kids are are a big concern or or you know a big focus uh for you in this whole endeavor you know it, because they're being raised in, in christian beliefs and christian values 
know, that's a huge thing when, when you start bringing children into a religion before they're, and I, I don't know exactly how old your, your, um, your children are. I don't think we, we heard that from you, but however young they are, you know, you start, it's okay to talk to kids about religion and faith. You know, I think that's fine. Um, what I guess though, is that when they're especially young, you know, you say two small kids, but when they're especially young, they're so impressionable and they're going to pick up on everything. And, and, but they don't even understand really the, the meaning of religion, right. And why it is that you believe it. Uh, they're just believing it because you're telling them to, you know, because you're the adult and they're the kids. There has to come a time. I feel like they, they need to choose for themselves. And we, we, as the adults and we, as, as the, the, the people who are in, in care of them should be the guides, you know, the guiding uh, forces for them allow them to choose and allow them to decide, all right, well, do I want to believe this? Do I want to believe that? Well, are you not sure? What do you want to know? How can I help teach you? What can I show you to, you know, give you more information to determine if this is something you want to, to figure out, right? Now, the Christian views on, on that whole thing is, is completely opposite. You know, they're going to say, no, you need to train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know, you, the Christians will tell you that, you know, that the rod and correction is, 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 is important in, in a child's upbringing, you know, and the Christians will tell you that uh, if you don't care for your child's soul, you know, you condemn them to hell. So it is your obligation as a parent to bring them up in the ways of the Lord and all this, you know, I get that. And I understand where someone like your wife is coming from to want to do that because they, they view the world differently than we do. Um, we have different worldviews. So at, when, 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 when you start bringing kids into the mix, it, it becomes very, very challenging, I would say, if, if almost near impossible to, uh, you know, reach an amicable place. Now, anyone listening and watching, comment down below, write into the show, MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com, tweet it you know, at me on Twitter, you know, shared it on Facebook, whatever, just ask the question. What do you think? Are there people listening and watching right now that are in the, the same exact situation as Chad that have made it work? And what do you do? Again, I think it goes back to the whole respect thing. You know, if you want uh, respect or if your wife wants to respect, wants you to respect her uh, wishes to, to practice Christianity then she should respect your uh, desire to want to practice heathenry and have a place in your home to do so if that's what you want. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, you forcing anything, but if, 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 if she's that far committed to the fact that it's evil, it's against God, it's wrong, it, this, is, this is, you know, going to, uh, you know, beguile our children or any sort of thoughts like that, then there's other bigger things that need to be worried about because there's there's no reasoning with that there's no getting like i said to an amicable place when it's that strict and when it's that far you can attempt to you know reason with them like i did with my family over so many years i'm like you know look i respect your decision to be devout in your faith and i and i think it's wonderful that you are i i want I, if i'm respecting you enough then then respect me enough and they took that and they said yeah well fine we'll we'll respect it away from you and we don't want you anywhere near us we couldn't we could not coexist <laughs> you know they could not abide it and they would not put up with it and every time that we had a conversation or, or whatever it, the, the the whole thing would be like well you know if you were doing it this way you know the answer that, of how you should be dealing with this but since you're doing it another way then it doesn't it doesn't work and you're not gonna you know so there was this this contention this this is just constant contention that we, you know, honestly this whole the thing that went down with the way my family did um was a, I'm, I'm i'm gonna just say it was a long time coming you know i i held out for as long as i would and i and could hold out and it wasn't me that said we're done but i kept on i kept trying i was like we can do this guys we can do this it's fun you know we don't have to be each other's enemies here we can do this 
And I still feel that way, but they don't. And like I said, sometimes that's just the way it goes. And, and, you know, so that, and then at that point you have a choice, you know, how do you live? Um, will you live with uh, um, somebody who's, who's not going to meet you halfway? That's not going to um, cooperate, not cooperate, but um, uh, lost the word. Uh, wow. Hmm. They are not going to. <laughs> you ever have that happen? You ever have that happen where you just, you know what the word is, you've used it a hundred thousand times in your life. And you know what, what it means. <laughs> but the word escapes you. Golly, this is one of those times where I'm just literally sitting here with my foot in my mouth. They are not willing to. Hmm. Well, here I am in front of all you people looking like a fool. Compromise. There it is. I knew I'd get it. They're not willing to compromise. Why did that take me a minute and a half to figure out? If they're not willing to compromise, what are you left with? You know? And I don't know. Nobody, nobody can really answer that, I think, for you except you. Because once again, with the whole respect thing, uh, the, I, and I mentioned this earlier when I was talking about you know, the, the roots of heathenry and then the heart of heathenry being in the hearth. The hearth meaning the home. Without a strong home life, without a strong home unit, a hearth, without a, without a healthy hearth, how can tribe even be thought of, you know, because a tribe is an extension of family. And if the family is not strong, then how can the tribe be strong? And in the family, in the hearth, there is trust, there is respect, there is love, there is frith. And frith means a lot of those things, and it means more than those things, too. You know, there is that obligation to one another um, that, that, that each other has, because, that, that each other have because of, you know, I mean, when I think of the person who I've tied the most amount of weird with it's my wife i mean we've shared in literally almost everything together you know physically spiritually emotionally you know mentally psychologically we, we we've literally woven so many threads together that there is not one person on this planet that i can think of right now that I am more connected with and I am that I have invested more of my, uh, you know, luck into. And when you, when you do that with someone, when you, when you exchange that much weird and tie that much together with someone, how hard, you know, if you, if you can't live amicably together, you're, 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 you're doomed, you know, it's like, you just got to go in there and then root it out, dig it up from the roots and start all over again. And I mean, who wants to do that? So I get, you're in a very unique situation, Chad. Um, I would, I would definitely encourage you to check out those videos that I've posted in the description and um, everybody else listening, check out the show notes for some of those videos from Eric Shervin over at the Ravens call. And maybe get some more insight and, and offer our, you know, everybody listen and watching, please offer your insights, comment down below, right into the show, you know, share it to your Facebook's uh, feeds or, or, or tweet it on, on Twitter and at me. Um, let's hear back from the community and let's hear some random ramblings from, from the rest of everybody else. I'd love to see what you all have to say 
about the situation. Cause I mean, again, I think that it can work, but it's going to require work on both of y'all's parts, right? It's, you can't just be you being willing to, to do all the things. Cause if I were to put any money on anything, I would say that I'd put it on the fact that you are willing to bend to the point of, of being nearly broken to, to see that this works. Right. And if you're, wife is not and she's just stuck in the facts that you know there's nothing right about you as a heathen and there's nothing that our kids need to be involved in or or whatever like if there's absolutely no wiggle room there that's a whole other thing that's another discussion and that's not something that i would feel comfortable in in um getting involved in <laughs> that's a you thing right um but uh not my hall not my call that's another Eric Shervin, when you watch his stuff, if you're not subscribed to his channel, go through his video catalog, you'll hear the not my hall, not my call uh, phrase used a lot in his video catalog. And I love it. It, means, it makes perfect sense. It's, you know, not my hall, not my call. It's not my chair, not my problem, not my house, not my rules, right? So... <sighs> I hope everything does work out. I hope that, you know, where you came from, I'm not sure because you said you've been in this heathen path now for the last, you know, a few months or so and looking for people in the area uh, to kind of connect with and link with. Good luck with it all. Um, tremendous. I, I mean, I mean that genuinely. I, I wish you the best and hope that you find a solid community. I hope that maybe this um, airing will, will help connect you with some people um that's i mean that would be great um network a little bit see what see what happens i i can't tell you how many times i've i've, I've encountered uh or, or been a part of conversations uh, with people that um met through this network through midgard musing specifically whether it was through the youtube channel or whether it was through a facebook live you know stream or or whether it's been now through the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, the, 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 the people that get connected in the ways that they do uh, through this platform and through this network is, has been pretty cool. You know, not something that I thought would have, would have happened, but it, but it has. So I do wish you the best of luck and I wish you the best of luck for your family and that, uh, you know, you can find some, some uh, resolve to the whole thing and that it works well for, for everybody. So that'll do today's show. Um, I do have, again, uh, another uh, viewer request. Um, next week and the week after will most likely be dedicated to, uh, to Blake. Um, so Blake, if you're listening, watching, um, I did get your email and your questions will be the topics of discussion over the next couple of weeks. And I will hope to have some guests in on that show or shows to uh to weigh in as well because you brought up some really awesome things and i can't wait to get around to filming that episode or episodes i should say and uh putting them out here so for everybody out here listening watching um send in your thoughts uh if you want to call and leave a, a message uh 615-671-9832 uh about you know chad's situation you want to offer your ideas or thoughts on that if you want to write in that's midgard musings tn at gmail.com of course you can always dm me on twitter or facebook i don't keep up with my messages on instagram so tagging me there or sending me messages there will uh do no much of good do no much of good yes it will do no much of good for you to do that so at me on twitter Drop me a message there if you want. Facebook works too. Send in an email. Um, any of those things. Send in your thoughts. Would love to have you featured on a future Midgard Musings podcast. Uh, Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Midgard Musings productions. All one and the same. Um, so yes, thank you all so much for tuning in to today's episode. Um, if you haven't yet and you liked what we are talking about and you want to see more of these things, make sure to upvote right? Whether that's liking this video, sharing the content around on your, on your social media sites and platforms, um, commenting, engaging in 
the, 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 the podcast in whatever way that your platform allows you to. I know these uh, YouTube videos, you've got the, the live chat in the, in the comment section. Please like, comment. That helps a lot. Share the videos as well. That always uh, helps. And subscribe. You know, if you're listening or following my podcast anywhere, that follow button or that subscribe button does wonders. And I greatly appreciate it. If you're looking to help the channel or this podcast monetarily, there's a link tree link that's posted in the description and show notes of this and every podcast. There's a link tree link there. If you click on it, it'll bring up all of the various ways that you can help support, whether it's through buying merchandise or becoming a patron on Patreon or a channel member or whatever. Check it out. See if anything there fits you. Um, but if not, no big deal. As always, just your views, comments, likes, and shares, um, and engagement is what really brings the value to the table. So thank you all so much for your ongoing and constant support. It's been great to see you all once again. Until the next episode, may the gods continue to walk with you, and may your ancestors smile upon you. Take care.